Hello, today we're going to go over some pretty powerful pricing strategies um, that you can and should consider using with price extensions in AdWords campaigns. Uh, first, the first thing we're going to do before we go over what the strategies are is just take a look real quick at uh, where the extensions can be found in your AdWords account. Um, as of this recording, uh, these extensions are only in the new AdWords interface. A lot of people are still using the old one. Um, but they're not found there. They're only in the new one. So that's why we're going to go over um, where they're found. Uh, as you can see here, I'm on the overview tab. You can set them up at any level of your campaign, um, but I'm at the account level right now. You can see there's an ad, ads and extensions tab right there. Um, you'll have to navigate um, to the extensions tab here. Uh, you're going to want to filter out. Um, some of you may you know, have taken over an account from somebody else, and so there's extensions here. Um, there may already be price extensions set up. You don't know, but you definitely want to find out um, and filter for price extensions uh, only and hit apply. That way you can see if you have any. Obviously, here we don't have any set up yet, but the way to set up uh, new extensions is to hit that plus button, choose price extension, and um, the setup wizard is here for you. You can see over here that there's a couple of previews that's on a mobile device and there's on the desktop how these extensions will look. Um, we'll stick to the desktop for now so you can uh, see how those get set up. Um, basically you can do that uh, price extensions at all three levels of your account. Um, just know that they override each other. So if you set one up at the top level of your account, um, which doesn't happen too often, but um, may happen because um, most of the time you want to show, you know, different products and different plans or whatever, um, you know, at different levels of your, of your account. You might set it up at the account level for like a subscription uh, website because you only offer subscriptions. And so you're, that's what you're going to be promoting across your entire uh, account. Um, but typically if you have an e-commerce, you know, account with different, uh, products and different categories, then you'll you'll go down these levels. But they do override each other, so just remember that. Um, you know, you can set them up whatever language or currency you want. Um, the type here is for you know how you're going to segment out each of your um, three extensions. Uh, the minimum of three that you're going to set up here. Um, the types here is basically how you're going to segment out. Um, your price extensions here, what category they fall under. Um, you can see the different options here. I'm going to pick uh, service tiers right now. Um, the example I'm going to use is basically I'm a subscription site and I've got uh, three plans that uh, I am going to offer um, here. So down here you can see um, there's five options with the option to add more here. Um, I'm just going to set up three for now. Um, cause I'm a, a subscription site that offers, uh, three plans. So I have a basic plan of $49 a month per month in units there. And then you can set up a description, which shows under that. Um, so I'll just say for those starting out, it's a good description of what the basic plan is for. Um, and then of course you, you can have whatever final URL takes it to that landing page there. Um, for the second option, let's just say I'll go with my plus plan and that's going to be $99 a month. And I'll just say, if you want to do more, because everybody does. And then last, go with my pro plan for a cool $199. And we'll just say per month there. And uh, the pro plan, of course, is for people that want to get huge results fast. So pretty simple there. Um, two options under here. You can basically add custom parameters to your URLs for your uh, price extensions to see how they perform if you want to in Google Analytics or other analytics tools. And the last one is uh, pretty important, pretty cool here, um, scheduling. You Just like some other extensions in AdWords, you can schedule these. Um, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, uh, especially for e-commerce, you know, different 
times of the year, maybe sales, things like that. Um, your prices are going to change on your products. Um, so you can set these up to start and end on certain dates. You know, classic is holiday season, stuff like that, um, where you want to set up a schedule uh, for that. So you hit save and you got a new price extension um, and that's how you set them up. Um, but now I want to talk about the meat of uh, what I want to talk about, which is uh, some different strategies you should uh, try out or consider depending on what kind of uh, products you sell or website you have. Um, I basically outline these in a blog post on the granular blog um, right here, five, five powerful techniques you can use with uh, price extensions. So go ahead and take a look at that. Basically, um, what I talk about is, you know, how traditionally price pricing strategies have been more of a post-click conversation, you know, on the website, you know, how do you design, how do you um, show your show off your prices and um, show your products. Um, but it's becoming more of a pre-click conversation because um, in the last couple of years, um, you know, new ad formats and extensions that especially Google has put out have kind of, you know, given ads more real estate and allowed them to show pricing more, stuff like that. So it's definitely becoming a more of a pre-click conversation in terms of how are you showing your prices. Um, and so, um, you know, the big thing about pricing is that it's very emotional, right? It's a very emotional issue. Uh, one quote I want to point out in the post is by Tim Ash, who's a, a conversion expert. And here he basically says, spending money is experienced by the same parts of the brain as feelings of physical pain. So as marketers, we have to minimize this perceived loss of resources symbolized by money. You know, and he, he uses this word perceived, which is really important because, you know, basically, you know, customers, um, pain levels and pain tolerances when it comes to pricing are all different. It's all about the perception of the value you're getting versus um, the the pain of, you know, paying whatever it is you're asking them to pay. Um, so as marketers, you know, we, we have to do the best we can to help uh, customers kind of get beyond the pain, realize the value uh, of what, you know, we're offering them. Uh, so one example I really love um, about pricing and pain is um, my wife uh, and I went to a concert and, um, you know, you, you may have done this before. You go to a concert or a ball game or something and, and she ends up paying four dollars for a bottle of water. Right. Which is in, in the typical context is crazy. Right. Because we go to the grocery store and we get a flat of water for 12 cents a bottle. Right. So why would you pay, you know, you know, 40 times more? Uh, for a bottle of water. Well, simple. She, we were at a concert. We just filled up on Chinese food about an hour before that. So she's super thirsty. Plus she's trapped in the venue. There's no other options. Um, you know, and our budget isn't super tight so we could afford it. So it was fair enough for her to let go of $4. No big deal. Um, because the thirst and the context of her thirst, uh, made it worth it. Um, you know, so you change any one of those factors, she's not paying it. It'd be too painful for her. Um, and so that, that's a good example, I think, of, of context and how, you know, changing the context changes our, our, perceived, um, our perceived value of the, of the cost we're asking to pay. So there's some techniques you can use in these price extensions that kind of shift the context a little bit for people and make the pain less, you know, when we present our pricing and our options. Uh, the first one I'll share is called framing. So framing basically uses, you know, a higher price product to change the context of the product that you want to sell. So in this example here, which is the one I used in the setup, um, you can see if I just if I just had these two plans offered, um, let's say I had a basic plan and a plus plan. And of course, the basic plan doesn't come with some things. The plus plan comes with everything. Um, you know, the price here of ninety nine dollars is double the basic. Well, you know, studies have shown if you just offer these two options, more people are going to pick the basic plan. Um, and, you know, they may even come in with the idea of, you know what, I'll, I'll try the basic plan first. And then, you know, if I feel like I need the, the plus plan later, maybe I can upgrade. Well, the point is more people are going to pick the basic plan. Studies have shown if you add a third option that's even higher priced, right, 199 now the context has totally changed here, right? So, Instead of most people picking the basic plan, a lot more people are going to feel like they're cheapo, right, when it comes to this. 
And there more people are just going to consider the plus plan because the context of this plan makes this look um, cheaper than it is if you only had the two options there. So that's one thing to consider is creating more of a premium option if you don't already have that. Uh, the second one is decoys. Um, the concept here is basically offering a similar but inferior product to service at about the same price. Um, you can see here, actually I've waited it a little bit. Um, I'm selling a bottle with twice as much stuff in it for not twice as much cost, right? And so instead of paying 48, uh, you're only gonna pay 34. Wow, what a great deal, right? And so the perception here, the context here is that I'm getting a much, much better value uh, with this bottle than I am with this bottle. And of course we know that, you know, on the business side, that's good for us because we're selling more uh, revenue there. We're getting more revenue uh, for, for our sale. Uh, the third one is a classic, right? Bundling. We see this with cable. We see this with buying a new car. Um, basically you unlink specific products uh, from specific prices. So if you were to offer as a cable company, TV, phone, internet, and you label on with the price and they came out to a certain price, um, people would be less willing to pay that total than if you just bundle them all together and say, all right, you get all these for this, this price. Um, same thing with the car, right? All the add-ons, all the features. If you just give them one price and say, hey, this is the, the upgrade package for one price, it kind of takes people's minds off of processing each individual um, price for each individual item and they're more likely to spend more um, than if you listen to them separately. So that's another one to consider. You can see here, complete card detail, instead of offering interior and exterior, um, I offer both at 175. You know, another trick you could do there, you can combine these together, and I could actually, um, you know, use this example here and say, well, the interior is 100, and the exterior is 100, and the interior and exterior is 175. Well, I'm probably going to sell more of both, right? Because I'm the perception there is I'm getting $25 off if I just get both. And so, you know, a lot of people love to save money. And so they think they are. Uh, the fourth one is called chopping down. Um, the basic concept here is you chop down the price into time periods. Instead of saying, you know, 30 bucks a month to sponsor a child, um, you say it's only a cup of coffee a day. Right. And so the perceived pain of a cup of coffee a day is just lower than uh, saying 30 bucks a month, um, even if it's the same price. Again, it's just the perception of what it costs. Um, so you can see here breaking down the subscriptions into a per day value might be a good option to go with. The last one I'll share is basically uh, offering something free. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but you can include a zero price point in price extensions. Um, so if you offer a free trial, you know, people knowing that you have a free trial, um, would be important. It could attract more clicks for you. And also, you know, in the context of the monthly and yearly subscription, um, especially, you know, looking at it per day, again, combining some different techniques together. Um, this looks really good cause I can try it out and Hey, if I like it, it's only 33 cents a day, a cup of coffee. Well, not Starbucks coffee, but you know, a regular cup of coffee. Um, so there you have it, five techniques to consider depending on our website, uh, products you sell. Um, as always, feel free to reach out to us here at Granular if you need any uh, assistance with your campaigns. And have a great day.